Brian, and if you'll give me a nod, everybody's hearing me okay? Good. Uh, yes, thank, you all for, thank you all for joining. As you know, this has been uh, a very challenging and rewarding year for all of us in education, and uh, as we looked at uh, the pandemic and the obstacles that were in front of educators for this year, way back in the summer, in August, uh, June actually, of 2020, I began looking at the need for assessment uh, in our accountability system and how that should operate during a pandemic. Uh, I felt that it was my responsibility to seek a waiver for our summative assessments, the spring testing, as we usually call it. Uh, I did seek that waiver back in the fall uh, when the uh, Betsy DeVos was serving as U.S. Secretary of Education. You know the administration changed. Uh, we have been in constant communication with the new administration, Biden administration, and Secretary Cardova's office. Uh, not only to that we would not give our summative assessment, but that we would instead use the volume of data that we have from the interim assessments that have been given twice already and would be given a third time in school districts. That information gives immediate response for teachers. So we, teachers in their classrooms and principals at their schools, district level folks, and us at the department, uh, we or we at the department, we have the information now and know where our students are and have already begun the interventions that are needed to assist those students in uh, catching up or doing the work that they need to do to be at their full potential. So we asked for the waiver, and we also asked for, uh, we sought waivers on our accountability system, which would include uh, no penalty for the 95% participation rate and that ratings would not be given and a few other specific things I'll ask Dr. Payne to speak on later. Over the weekend, we heard from the U.S. Department of Education. They did approve our request on our accountability system, which included no penalty for the 95%, less than 95% participation rate uh, for the um, percentage, 20% uh, percentage not to be used in the high school assessment, and a few other things. However, they denied our request to waive the summative assessment. I was very disappointed uh, in that because I felt strongly that, yes, we had to have assessments, but that we in South Carolina had done the assessments and had the data that we needed. However, under this denial from the administration, uh, we will and are proceeding to give our summative assessments. Uh, those will be done in the regular time frame, 30 days prior to the close of school. These would be administered in English language arts, math, and science, grades three through eight for English language arts and math, and in the fourth and sixth grade for science, and then those end of course tests in high school, which are algebra, English, biology and uh, U.S. history. The 20% will be left up to the schools, whether or not they want to count that. Uh, some of them have already made the decision that they will, but we left that up to the individual school to make that decision. So once again, I am disappointed because uh, I do value the knowledge that we obtain from assessments. We must give those assessments. However, I felt that we in South Carolina had the information, and because of the pandemic, we did not need to have our students go through that extra testing this year. I am happy that the U.S. Department of Education did approve our request for the no penalty on the 95% participation. So we will work very closely. No student in South Carolina, no teacher, no school or district will be penalized if they have less than 95% participation. We encourage students to participate and for families to participate. However, there will be no penalty uh, for that. If they choose not to, it is a decision left up to that family as to whether they can send their child safely to school uh, for the purpose of taking this test. 